Hello and welcome back to another guide for War Tales. My name is Heiken and today we're continuing our guide section with a in-depth combat guide. This is going to be a different guide than the others. I figured many of you might be struggling in the tactical aspects of the game, so I wanted to show you a typical combat and how to deal with it, how to interact, how positioning affects uh, your characters and just the general order of things. I go through the basics then a little bit more advanced and we're going to do a bit of a play-by-play -play whilst we're uh, going along. So the situation that we're finding ourselves in, I deliberately have chosen a party, level 11, uh, some of them level 12, um, and paired them up against an overwhelming force. You can see on top here, we're having six characters, ignore the bear for now, and we're fighting against uh, an overwhelming number of anywhere between 11 and one round of reinforcements that could be up to 20 enemies. So a couple of things to note um, in advance. Um, I will be playing through that as uh, as we go. Um, this here is the base party that I have been suggesting uh, to build in my uh, best party guide. So uh, this is more um, an indication of how to actually play them in combat and how to manage your resources. So let's start with a bit of theory and then we're seeing how it applies. Uh, the most important resource for you in most of the combats is going to be Vela points and armor of your tanks. I mentioned in my bar uh, party guide that you want to have at least um, a third of your uh, characters as tanks. We have six characters, two tanks in this case, the Brute and the Swordsman. Uh, both are one-handed shield wielding with around 600 armor, 65-ish um, uh, guard. So that's an effective armor value of give and take 2,500 hit points as long as they remain with guard. Let's talk about enemy aggression um, and how to deal with them with the tanks. Um, you want to typically focus on choke points. You can see terrain um, that um, allows the enemies to bulk up and cluster. Enemies will always go for the nearest uh, target unless there is a better target, a multi-attack uh, option available or unless they can flank a target. So keep that in mind. Um, if you, for instance, move to this um, field here, uh, they will flock around uh, the tank. Number two, you can see that um, every single character is about 1.5 meters or five feet in um, in uh, width, which means if we're positioning some, uh, something along the lines of that, this only leaves a meter worth of uh, uh, field that's not enough for them to squeeze uh, through. So you have a broader field uh, of blockage with that. Going back to Valor points that I mentioned initially, they, uh, my theory was uh, Valor points is they are a resource that you want to spend. There are characters that spend Valor points, typically the damage dealers, and then there are characters that generate Valor points, typically the tanks and the support characters. In this formation, are both tanks as well as the spearmen are going to be the Valor generating um, characters, um, whilst the others are going to be the Valor spending characters. So. In order to um, pull this off, we have started with full Valor um, and I want to make sure that according to my um, to my own description that we are going to build a front line here. Um, typically, you want to eliminate threats before they even appear. Um, in this case, you can um, look at who is going to be next in the initiative order. It's uh, going to be on that side. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to see the these two um, acting. So getting this guy in combat relatively early would be helpful. Keep in mind, we want one meter distance here so that we have the maximum uh, blocking potential. Uh, anyone moving up here cannot reach us, so they will need to move all the way around here. We're going to do um, what the Brute character is um, good at, which is being Valor neutral and respectively dealing some damage uh, via repost. Um, I've gone through the build in detail in my Brute uh, guide. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're engaging. With every engage, we're getting a Valor point. And with every disengage, there is a 50% chance that we are hitting them. Plus every uh, second hit that we are executing, 
um, generates us a repost. So after a few hits, you can already see that we have killed the first enemy. Mind you, this is a tank equal, uh, if not higher enemy, easily goes down and we have lost almost no health in return. We're going to stay here, end the turn and build a front line on the side. Now, unbeknownst to us, uh, someone was up here um, and is uh, using fire, <clears throat> more precisely a fire bow or a bo burning oil. Good. Let's talk about further Valor generation. I want to set us up for, uh, for next turn with appropriate Valor, but before we can do it, we can now see that enemies are acting and I don't want to take as much damage. I right click. Um, the skills that I want to use in order to get a preview um, if there is a position where I could get everybody in and there indeed is one We're moving into the back line with our DPS that triggers a lone wolf because he's more than five feet uh, five meters away from the brood we're uh, challenging shouting everyone to us and we're going to use our uh, uh, our uh, cutting maelstrom execution in order to kill all of them. You can see we've now lost a few Valor points. That is normal. Uh, I mentioned that uh, we uh, would be not Valor um, neutral with a character, but I want to spend even a bit more and we're doing that in order to um, in, in order to invest even more Valor points. I sprinted, so we've overall used three valor points moving as far back as we can and we know very well that this henchman would engage the uh, the warrior however with 26 percent guard and enough um, armor we can theoretically frontline anyone coming from up here would go for the brood there is an undisclosed uh, number of enemies uh, over here and there are quite a few enemies over there moving on we know the next enemies um, uh, will act over here there is a potential that they will come in uh, up here, which means we want to uh, build the next front line. Before we do that, though, I like to uh, use tactical order and I like to use tactical order for the characters that generate the most valor. Typically, you want to get a brute in range in order uh, in order to do that. Um, so a more optimal way of uh, doing that would have been uh, to get the brute right up to here and then use tactical order since we're okay-ish on valor points a triplet um, will go well we then want to use a bravery a level 12 uh, skill that is um, increasing the crit uh, hit and crit chance for as many characters as we can we are moving into the best position that we can we're missing uh, our warrior here, but that is okay. It's still worthwhile. Everybody gets zeal with the exception of our warrior. We will then proceed to move uh, forward. We know that the renegade uh, up here, uh, spearmen, will start to engage. Um, and I would like to stay up here. It's still the closest uh, target. Um, he will not be able to reach us fully and we would have the ability next turn to deal even more damage with a spear throw end of turn sometimes positioning all right i stand corrected barely reached us sometimes positioning is more important than anything else so next up henchmen uh, down here would be able to uh, to, uh, uh, to move next we want a fast character the ranger is the perfect one for it uh, ranger again is a uh, spending character so we're going to spend more valor than we can uh, than we would need uh, we're healing the burning off of the spearmen proactively we're then moving quite far down uh, to here characters already bleeding which means that our assassination automatically triggers a critical hit and unfortunately for us that uh, means we can no longer uh, get the reset of movement so we could have been a bit um, a bit more efficient uh, by hitting him and then uh, triggering the reset to go all the way back to the renegade but we're fine we saved uh, enough uh, valor for now next turn however we need to go a little bit more um, aggressive so let's talk about um, crowd controlling um, and positioning 
Uh, that's where the archer comes into play. Uh, let's assume the bear wouldn't be here. Uh, looters, uh, looters turn will come around soon. So what we want to do really is we want to use our lone wolf um, uh, status over here. We want to get rid of uh, the looter. The easiest way to do that is to actually shoot him all the way back into the fog. He's not dead, but he is deeply injured and for us uh, uh, stunned or slowed for two rounds so currently we don't need to care about him in the meantime we're continuing with our war bow and are uh, starting to hit individual enemies um, typically we would be a valor spender but uh, with um, orderly that we have uh, gotten and the ability to kill that frequently we're actually a Valor Generator. Uh, we could uh, go in and even Wrath kill uh, that guy, but there is no point in doing that. Instead, I want to make sure that we're not missing any character here and we're ending our turn. Good. Raider begins to uh, to uh, set up for the next uh, for the next turn. But well, that is totally fine. Uh, we are going to be ready for that. Uh, let me show you a couple of uh, tricks of how to deal with that. Spearman, in this case, uh, has the ability to reposition uh, the uh, the enemy. Um, we know only one character, that brood, is going to act uh, before the end of the turn, which allows me to be a bit more cocky and actually start sprinting in. We we'll move the character closer to the bear for next turn. And we're going to uh, provide flanking bonus. Uh, we are okay on Valor. Would I have needed Valor since the Spearman uh, generates Valor in the current skilling that I do have by standing next to a character? I would have not moved in. But that way we, we are now uh, positioning ourselves very well up here. Any character that um, uh, is going to come to us will need to deal with the repost and also um, uh, will only be able to attack from one angle. There is not enough space for multiple characters. Spearman next turn can simply sprint away and leave the guys be. We know there is a character there. Um, and now finally enemy reinforcements are incoming. Our positioning with a tank up here um, turned out to be a really good idea. So let's take a look. Uh, there are a couple of enemies over here and one enemy that we do not know where exactly they are. Uh, so in absence of that knowledge, I want to explore a little bit further um, what we're going to find over here. We're pushing that raider uh, closer in. And this time we're building a front line uh, with brutality as uh, the raider comes in. They will need to deal um, with us. I could have even gotten us um, more Valor points, but for now we're fine. The fire on the other hand sucks. Uh, we need to deal with that relatively soon. Our tank engages up here. Both of the spearmen don't uh, want to melee engage immediately, but we see an opportunity, or I see an opportunity up here for a nice multi-kill. So let's uh, try to set that up next, where uh, whenever I see multiple targets, we're either going to use uh, our warrior in order to engage with them, this time maybe on, uh, on the front line down here, or we're using our ranger to um, to execute them. All of these guys have already acted, so there's no point in uh, in actually um, acting um, immediately against them. What I would want to say though is, in case of a doubt, I tend to use tanks first uh, in order to um, close a um, specific front line. That tends, in general to be a more efficient uh, way of uh, playing because you uh, mm, you can make sure that your uh, backline is being well kept. Uh, so we know these guys are acting. Next, uh, same ordeal. We want to kill uh, threats before they appear.
A hit. Another hit. And we're barely not making it in. I was uh, trying very hard uh, to actually reach both of them. But uh, with him now forcefully engaging with us, there is uh, this whole flank uh, is uh, being um, well kept. There is no more threat from here. So how do we want to deal with that? The Raider could theoretically go and um, flank us. We don't want that. So what we're going to do instead is um, and let's talk about that uh, for a second. We're going to use all of our abilities. So number one, we want to deal as much damage as possible. Slow down whoever comes from up here. That's another level 12 ability. It generates a lot of rage stacks as you can see. Uh, plenty of rage stacks as well as uh, getting them down nicely. Uh, the bomber here, the archer will die, uh, but this guy hasn't acted. And we talk through a couple of other combat mechanics. If you are immediately standing next to a target, you can always shoot through. If the target is within um, the um, uh, within the uh, direction of your shot, there is a percentage chance. However, you can negate that percentage chance with aim. And we want to make sure that this guy is being taken care of. Um, well then. Uh, continuing to move further, heal the bear so that they don't take burning damage. And we're continuing to eradicate uh, the battlefield. Super strong showing by the archer. You can see just with a, a basic um, bow, he's uh, just having a normal war bow. Um, he can el eliminate um, multiple targets kill two and slow down all of them even if he wouldn't have killed that target he would have pushed it so far away that the target becomes irrelevant uh should have moved uh, five feet away that was a bit stupid i um, reignited uh, the bear again all right seeing a triplet up here always warms my heart because there is a real chance that we can multi-kill, but I would need to move uh, through them. Yeah, unfortunately that uh, will only be a doublet. All right. Good. We're, re uh, we're getting reduced Valor, so let's see how we can generate uh, some more Valor. One way of doing that is working with the tanks, and uh, one thing that I like on my tank uh, tanks is Brave's Oil, which gives you a 50% chance of generating a Valor uh, when engaging. Combined with the uh, skill uh, for the tanks, uh, it is actually a 100% chance. You can see we have uh, just gotten two Valor out of it. Um, spend one, get two. Easy math right there. And for free skills like uh, your normal melee attack, it even uh, creates uh, two. So you can see that was uh, Velo positive, and we even killed two on top of uh, that. Repost tanks, very, very strong. Good. Time to finish a couple more over here. I'll show you a few more tips and tricks of how to deal with positioning for starters. We're killing that guy. We're then moving up. If you're sprinting after burning, you um, remove burning, by the way. Just a little tip. Yeah, and that already concludes the battle. Um, I think long enough uh, for a small guide. Uh, I hope that have taught you the absolute basics of uh, the combat. We've went through Valor generation and uh, Valor uh, sinking. We've uh, uh, talked through positioning and uh, mm, 
uh, ceiling off of flanks. We've talked uh, through efficient use of action economy. We've talked through crowd control and you've seen the builds in action as well. So that's really the basic of how combat works. Uh, don't sweat it if you don't have all of those skills yet. Just apply the basics um, from uh, what, what I've been trying to teach in this video and you will see an immediate improvement in your combat setup. Thanks for watching and have a great one. Bye bye.